Hello and welcome back to Humans and Society. This video focuses on the topic, the human person and death, under the subject, Introduction to the Philosophy of the Human Person. Death is a sensitive topic, often avoided by people, but it is an important concept in philosophy when it comes to understanding the meaning of human life. Death is a part of reality. Everything that lives will eventually die. It is a reminder of the limitation of our existence. It is beyond our control when, where, or how it will happen. Death helps us value our own life and those of the people we love. Some of us are more prepared than others to accept our own impending death or the loss of a loved one. Understanding the concept of death will help us be at peace when the time comes. We wonder what comes after, but we may never truly know, because nobody will be able to share their story. For this lesson, we will focus on two philosophers and their explanation about their understanding of life and death. Epicurus grew up in a time when the philosophy of ancient Greece had already reached a pinnacle in the ideas of Plato and Aristotle. Epicurus, however, found the seeds of a new school of thought in the quest of earlier philosopher, such as Socrates' examination of the truth of basic human concepts and values. Central to the philosophy that Epicurus developed is the view that peace of mind, or tranquility, is the goal of life. He argues that pleasure and pain are the roots of good and evil, and qualities such as virtue and justice derive from these roots, as it is impossible to live a pleasant life without living wisely, honorably, and justly, and it is impossible to live wisely, honorably, and justly without living pleasantly. One of the obstacles to enjoying the peace of a tranquil mind Epicurus reasons is the fear of death, and this fear is increased by the religious belief that if you incur the wrath of the gods, you will be severely punished in the afterlife. For Epicurus, the greatest pleasure is only attainable through knowledge and friendship and a temperate life with freedom from fear and pain. Rather than countering this fear by proposing an alternative state of immortality, Epicurus tries to explain the nature of death itself. He starts by proposing that when we die, we are unaware of our death, since our consciousness or soul ceases to exist at the point of death. Since our soul operates dynamically within the body, and it is so fragile that they dissolve when we die, we are no longer capable of sensing anything in death. If we are unable to feel anything mentally or physically when we die, it is foolish to let the fear of death cause us pain while we are still alive. In his book, Being and Time, Martin Heidegger says that if you want to explore questions of being, we have to start with ourselves by looking at what it means for us to exist. When we are born, we find ourselves in an ongoing world that has existed before us, so that our birth, we are presented with a particular historical, material, and spiritual environment. We attempt to make sense of this world by engaging in various pastimes. Through these pastimes or projects, we literally project ourselves towards different possible futures. We define our existence. However, we become aware that there is an outermost limit to all our projects, a point at which everything we plan will come to an end, whether finished or unfinished. This point is the point of death. Death, Heidegger says, is the outermost horizon of our being. Everything we can do or see or think takes place within this horizon, and we cannot see beyond it. Dying is not an event. It is a phenomenon to be understood existentially. 
Heidegger's phenomenological notion of death has five important elements. The first is that death is certain. As soon as we are born into this world, whether we like it or not, eventually we will have to die. Second is that death is indefinite. While we are sure that death will come, we are not sure when, where, or how it will happen. Third is that death is one's property. Your death belongs only to you. Even if you don't want to die, nobody else can do it for you. Fourth, death is non-relational. When we die, we die alone. Even if we are surrounded by friends and family at the time, we will still have to face death on our own, and our friends and family cannot go with us. And fifth, death is not to be outstripped. We cannot remove the possibility of death. We can extend our lives through medicine and technology, but in the end, we will still have to die. It is to Heidegger that we owe the philosophical distinction between authentic and inauthentic existence. Most of the time, we are wrapped up in various projects and forget about death. But in seeing our life purely in terms of the projects, we miss a more fundamental dimension of our existence. And to that extent, we are existing inauthentically. When we become aware of death as the ultimate limit of our possibilities, we start to search a deeper understanding of what it means to exist. For example, when a good friend dies, we may look at our own lives and realize that the various projects which absorb us from day to day feel meaningless and that there is a deeper dimension to life that is missing. And so we may find ourselves changing our priorities and projecting ourselves towards different futures. We only have a limited time and what's important is we make the most of this time. As the Indian philosopher Osho once said, the real question is not whether life exists after death. The real question is whether you are alive before death. This is the end of the topic and the last lesson on their introduction to the philosophy of the human person. Thank you for watching. See you in another subject.